So ma'am, how the how you inspired to become a filmmaker? What inspired you to become a documentary filmmaker? Yeah, uh, actually, de- definitely. I mean, we all uh, aspire to do something in life, and we all feel this. Uh, you know, uh, we all come with some kind of purpose, and uh, I felt that you know. Uh, coming from a place like Manipur, where there is often conflict yeah. and you know, uh, riddle and violence, and often, you know, you need a platform to tell uh, stories. You know, the untold stories from this part of the region. So, though I really didn't really thrive to become a filmmaker, but the situation here in Manipur, you know, have accidental. You know, it was an accidental. <laughs> journey for me and i landed up becoming a you know documentary filmmaker storyteller and you know i wanted to tell about you know what kind of life we lead here what kind of people we come uh, you know from manipur you know their aspiration their dreams so yeah i have done uh, you know few films on people and life of manipur here yeah so so that happened actually us uh, So you always wanted to become a documentary filmmaker. Have you ever thought about making a fiction film? Uh, of course, like you know, uh, like it's like a whole transition. You literally grow in this journey. So uh, I have already made three uh, main documentaries so far, and definitely the the aspiration is very much deep down there to make a fiction. I've already also uh, have written a script. Wow. You know, yes, I've I've written a script. I've got it registered under Screenwriters Association yeah. Mumbai. Everything is done. I just need producers and the the right funders to help me produce it. So I need uh more uh, you know uh kind of uh engagement in that. You know, maybe a more uh like need to seek more people who who will be possibly. would make you know the, the kind of story people need to have interest in the kind of story and i have i'm i'm you know developing so i'm looking for the right producers actually um it's yeah. it may, it's really hard to get the funding for a documentary i guess yes um, true uh, akash i mean it's it's not easy because uh, but uh, i i would say things are slowly changing uh, the uh, you know I think the documentary uh, in India is slowly changing to a more, uh, you know, from from the past. I would say how it has become more popular and how people are really choosing. You know, documentary was there before also, but now I feel with more people, you know, getting to sensitize around the uh, storytelling, strong, you know, rooted storytelling around independent filmmakers. You know that it it is really growing for documentary filmmakers. So I feel, mm, yeah. So even for the commissioning part, even for fundraising or you know the the pitching platforms are also slowly increasing. Otherwise, it is very difficult for uh, you know documentaries to get funding, because uh, mostly documentaries turn out to be non-commercial. Yes. You know, yeah. It 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 is not. You know. you know their tickets are not sold you know they they're not in the box office you know all this so it it's really hard because documentary films is more like films you make but it it travels only in important film festivals and that is how you know it it works but slowly i think after this uh, whole popularization of you know uh, ott platforms i think the demand for good documentary content is also increasing like not just uh, web series but i think a very good quality documentary uh, content documentary subjects are also really uh, becoming a very you know good uh, for increasing uh, platforms on ott platforms they are also giving uh, the opportunity for documentary filmmakers if you have a very good subject yeah Ma'am, currently we know that Manipur has been facing so many atrocities. There has been war going on. So, ma'am, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on that? Because you are as a filmmaker and as a citizen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, but I, I am really uh, sorry to say, but it's, it's, it's a tough uh, situation. 
there has been unrest and there has been this um, disturbing you know conflict and violence that has been running for over nine months now and uh, and uh, and we we still uh, don't see you know a much uh, that respite and you know resolution yet yes Currently, so it's so it's it's, it's it's still going on and it it has affected socially economically politically in every segment every class of the people it has affected and um it is really sad because we all live in a democratic country like india where you know we uh, voted for the right people to you know help and safeguard protect the citizen of india but it, it's tough when we are not you know uh, being our own citizens are not being protected enough but you know we just you know day by day the the death tolls you know because of the conflict arises and it, it's really tough and you know for any individual to have not lost sanity you know in this situation so it's it's a very challenging time and very challenging phase for all of us and yeah despite uh, we all try to be there for each other trying to you know shout for peace hope you know uh, reconciliation and other thing it is still very tough because uh, the violence has been multi-layered you know it has the violence is really uh, entangled in many different layers so it is very tough to say uh, what is going on actually yeah um, yeah. Is it been like in your place? It's, is it fine or there has been? Uh, I I would say uh, I live in Imphal, so central Imphal is quite, uh, you know, uh, unaffected. But mentally, emotionally, everybody is all, uh, you know, affected because it's not easy here. You know, so uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, because you you keep you know seeing in 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 news, you keep reading about us. You see on social media also, uh, you see that how you know so many uh, youths, uh, you know people who have just started their businesses, whether it's startups or small entrepreneurs, they all have, uh, you know either relocated. Those who are able to relocate, they have relocated. But those who are who you know who just started a bit, you know thinking that after the COVID, it's you know, it's getting a little better again because of this violence of nine months it affected and they have to shut down their businesses. And so that had happened in Manipur. So it's really sorry situation, but still uh, the, you know, sports, you know, and documentary films are some areas are, you know, where yeah, I'm also lingering on storytelling. I'm also lingering on, you know, people who are artists are lingering on, on their artistic, what do you say, uh, hope that things would, you know, praying that things should become better. So that is the situation, Akash. Yeah. yeah. So, ma'am, you made your first documentary called uh, Auto Driver. It was the first documentary. So how the idea came and ma'am, what was your experience while making it? uh yeah actually yes uh auto driver uh yeah i told you that when i first made this film auto driver it was made out of a situation where i felt that something have to be done for a place like manipur because that time when i was making auto driver we had you know economic blockade for almost 11 months where you know where there was you know uh, violence in terms of road blockade and uh, and more you know uh, necessary necessary lifeline you know economic uh, you know lifeline for foods and food items and everything was so expensive that time because of the uh, road blockade uh, this whole uh, stretch you know that's bordering to nagaland and assam you know so it was tough that time and but just comparing those time with with today in Manipur, I think that was a more lesser thing, and I would say uh, so. I felt that I have to do some story, some kind of a story that would educate people also on you know this struggling daily wages in Manipur, because even a day or two 
uh, bun or blockade will hamper their, you know, earnings, their livelihood, the daily wage earners. Imagine if they are disturbed for one or two days, what will they eat if they don't bring money at home? So I wanted to address that issue a bit. So yeah, it happened through auto driver, this, you know, auto lady who drive an auto amidst all this, yeah, economic, you know, blockade and bun. So yeah, yeah. So that, that film came out quite, you know, a hard hitting one. Yeah. And how long People to... it took to like write, search, uh, shoot, and edit the film? Uh, it is. It took me. Auto Driver was a film that took me around three and a half years for me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's not a lot. Andrew Dreams actually took me six years. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like. Yeah. It, yeah. So. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it's, yeah, all the film, you know, the filmmaking journey has been really, really challenging. Yeah, you also have to see what's happening, you know, particularly at those period, at those time, you know, so everything is being reflected in the, you know, story. So, yeah. uh, Android Dreams, like, it's getting mm-hmm. a lot of critics. It, it got premiered at uh, IFI, IFFI. And, it, Ify, yes, and yeah. it got really good response there and I've seen the film I really loved it and man, how yeah, the idea you. came man, for to make a documentary uh, it's it's very organic Akash you know for me because like after I made this two films uh, on uh, Auto Driver Achovi in Love you know these two were also on these two very special women you know of Manipur one is a auto driver auto lady and the second one is the woman pony farmer who takes care of this uh, you know uh, animal pony you know who gave uh, you know uh, like we, we we say that you know if if you know that manipur is also a place where modern polo was originated the world's modern polo has been originated from manipur and slowly this uh, pon- polo ponies is you know it's on the verge of extinction and you know my subject achobi she was somebody who was taking care of this you know semi feral this pony and i i f- find it very enticing and very you know alluring that some old woman is doing that taking care of the horse like people really don't care about these days so so that film was also quite special for me but andro dreams idea also came something very organically like uh, i came across you know the story of i would say a, a small newspaper that carry the story of this football club in, in a village called andro and you know and, and there's a photo of all the women kicking up uh, kicking the ball up in the air and in this in, in this lustrous you know backdrop of green you know field and the and the mountains at the back hills at the back so so that kind of thing when i heard that again uh, an old woman uh, you know around 16 above uh, which is a retiring age in india as such you know she's looking after a football club and she own a football club so that is again a very you know very passionate wonderful, about football also. very very yeah. very passionate about football and uh like her age you know usually you know uh, the office going people by her age usually retires and sits at home and take care of children you know <laughs> but see somebody who took the responsibility of running this wonderful football club and also running her handloom handicraft and you know weaving uh, clusters in in the village empowering so many of her you know uh, sisters and friends and you know women in the village so it was so wonderful to meet her and i thought you know i should do this story on her and yeah that's how andro dream started 2017 onwards you know started wrecking and you know meeting her yeah and um, how much time it takes to make them to make the characters comfortable on camera because they're not that's directed. what i yeah so the first uh, thing is you know like you know i'm not an uh, alien person to them you know i'm i'm I, I i don't come from outside i'm their kind only so that and also a woman to woman you know i'm a woman who can listen to a woman more uh, comfortably so i think that also helped 
a lot to uh, bring a kind of a close relationship to have a very, you know, uh, more friendly relationship with your protagonist. So that happened. And I also built, you know, a little confidence uh, telling her that I have met uh, other few documentaries similarly and on two brave women, you know, in the past. And I told about her to them and 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 she said okay so she first understood documentary like she thought okay are you going to make a film on me but my house is not good you know my house is not painted she feel with film cinema people think it is about this whole uh, you know colorful bollywood running around the three thing you know they all feel like that with cinema with songs and all but i told her that documentary is a very different thing it is about uh real people real live experience you know the facts as it is so she was yeah then she said then then she agreed and i i just have to follow her like a shadow <laughs> i told her that you know i will not disturb because she's a very busy granny you know she's a very busy woman and i i didn't want to disturb her so much so i was like okay keep doing what you do i'll just keep following you like a shadow and you know you will not be disturbed at all so that's what i assured her and i, I started you know following my character like that especially the central character like me um uh, yeah. you i'm assuming that you didn't have any script like it goes with the flow every uh, day you made your script and all yes, everything comes yes. in editing then it takes time uh again yeah it will be wrong to say you don't have a script at all because for documentary also you need some kind of uh, you know um uh, blueprint some kind of a backdrop i would say uh where you know you have to somehow uh, write your synopsis you have to write your log line you have to write your treatment you know you have to write how you're going to film it you know in in what way or in what angle you want to film them so all this has to be uh, specified a bit you know there definitely you know that so many unplanned thing also happen but you have to assume a bit that uh, this is what you know uh, to to some extent this is what my you know broad idea is this but also while you know during the making of the film certain definitely you know it it didn't happen like how it has it has been written in the beginning but definitely it has given me the push to how i would see the film you know yeah yeah so that is needed yeah um, how big was the crew at that point um it, it was since uh, it was done over 5 6 years so i had you know uh, on and off uh, you know uh, people i also shot it you know few of my junior shot it and i have also hired people because uh, you know it, it is very difficult to have you know a permanent cinematographer for it because it has been shot over years and also uh, it has lots of different format my editor had a hard time you know making everything uh, in a you know while editing because it was shot over i think five six different devices yeah even even my uh, yeah even i started shooting with my iphone in between because there were certain uh, you know uh, uh, kind of a candid thing that happened and you cannot you know you were not ready with a camera but somehow i have to manage shooting with my iphone because life is so unpredictable right <laughs> something happened and like yeah so th- that's what it happened with andro dreams though i feel you know next time i i should always uh, you know keep a professional camera ready with me yeah <laughs> yeah ma'am it got such a good response so how does a filmmaker you have spent so many years with them how does it feel like people are really appreciating your film i i am over the moon actually i'm very happy because you know such kind of you know reality storytelling and which could really impact a society which could really impact the positive thing a woman is doing in a far flung you know a village like andro you know which is completely unknown to the people in this world i'm able to share through my documentary that there exists this woman look at you know her you know this 66 67 and what she's doing you know that kind of uh, is what you know uh, magical about documentary film you know that is that gives me so much uh, 
confidence and that give me so much you know motivation as well and and you won't believe akash that this film uh, becoming a talk of the town this be- you know film being the opening at ifi i mean this have definitely you know gave people an honest to you know think about manipur in a, in, a, in a, and its women as such you know and their stride and their potential and you know also uh, the life of sports people sports women you know and, and their how they live you know so it it is very important i feel the portrayal of all of them in this light and also it have garnered attention from donors garnered attention from supporters who want to come and you know extend help to support this uh, you know football club so all of this is going parallelly so i am you know i'm very happy with this you know so Man, yeah uh, have you ever played football were you interested in sport <laughs> No, not at all. I am the only black sheep in the family, you know, who is into arts. Otherwise, uh, my father, my brother, my younger brother, they're all into sports. Like every every household in Manipur, they're all you know we call Manipur the powerhouse of sports. So sports culture is very much prevalent in every family in Manipur. But I come, you know, from a sports family. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very less athletic person. You know, more thinker. Uh, I would say, you know, more who thinks a lot and imagine a lot. So it has been a different take for me. So yeah, but my father was a, uh, you know, my father uh, was a national footballer. So, but I have, I have watched him play in the ground. and i have uh, you know had experience of footballers visiting my home you know yeah so that have happened but i i have n- never got a chance to play okay. yeah man what is the future of andrew dreams it is if somebody wants to watch this film mm-hmm. like it's currently not been shown anywhere like in future yeah. It, yeah. in future you may be planning to show in or Yes, uh, yes. Actually, I haven't screened because right now, you know, only uh, you know, I'm I'm screening uh in in film festivals right now because of this, yeah, film yeah, film festival rounds are going on, and because of the situation in Manipur, I'm really sorry, you know, to say this, but you know, I'm not able to screen Andro Dreams, you know, as much as I want to screen for the first time in Manipur yet. Once you know the situation get settle a bit. you know andro village will be the place where i will be screening to the public for the first time yeah so that is my you know that is what i'm looking up to you know looking forward to to screen andro dreams at in andro for the and open it to public so that is what my dream is and see their reaction whether i get chappal tomato eggs whatever let's see the the reaction of the you know the whole people of andro but they do love me i know that there's lots of support for me let's see so i'm very anxious about the day i'll see that yeah when you are please do recommend some films and filmmakers like they inspired you like you really like uh yeah actually um uh oh, i like this woman a lot um what is her name uh, um as uh, uh, see one, one second she she made this uh, wonderful uh, documentary uh, on uh, gleaning uh, and agnes ward yes agnes ward yes agnes ward and uh, she is a wonderful lively crazy uh, documentary filmmaker and uh, her film uh, this gleaning thing you know it, it it was i think one of a kind i i watched and i have to learn a lot from the you know her style of you know very uh, spontaneous very instantaneous way of you know capturing reality through her camera and she is very playful as well Yeah, so I like that kind of you know uh, Agnes Varda's filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, an Indian filmmaker. And uh, an Indian filmmaker, I would say, um, um, in terms of documentary, uh, are you asking film, your recommendation? Okay. Um. Uh. Who is there? Like, uh, 
there are but you know i'm such a huge you know film buff as well i do watch a lot yeah and i'm i'm having literally i'm lost yeah 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 i think <laughs> yeah you you can actually yeah yeah, Chaitanya Temahari is also very good. Yeah, yeah. I also like his his kind of film, but uh, more if I I was, uh, yeah, if yeah, all that breeds even uh, even that's a wonderful, very uh also very stylized I would say, way of uh, you know, each and every shot that he used in all that breeds is so breathtaking and you know it's so enchanting it's not like the way i've done you know mine is you know the content it's the crazy content and the spontaneity but the kind of you know he even waits for this uh this flight you know to to appear the 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 reflection of the flight on the water it's it's so you know, beautiful. So even uh, Shonak Sense, I like. And then uh, uh, also, I like film of Rima Das, you know. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. And I love her film. Uh, both I love Village Rock Stars and Bulbul Can Sing, uh, you know, but I love uh, more of this is a fiction filmmaker i mean this is about like this is somehow you know now again when we we also start you know uh, in the sense there's a new uh, way of how we look at film as well i think now is the time where we're slowly the level of creativity the level of talents is so high that you there this thin you know diminishing line where you are confused whether it's a fiction or with whether it's a non-fiction that blurring because when you have non-actors you know being cast in a in a real setup in a real village you know then you completely forget that whether it's a documentary or a you know feature so that happened with uh, Rima Das kind of filmmaking so I love Bulbul can sing uh yeah and it, it, it's just, uh, it was quite, a, you know, right for me in the sense, in terms of emotions and in terms of, you know, uh, how, you know, she, she is able to, uh, you know, communicate with the audience. It's so alluring, I would say, so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, any future project currently you're working on, uh, you're doing festival runs currently? Yes, um, yeah, uh, my film is right, okay, going around in film festivals right now, but definitely uh, I'm shooting something right now, but I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not yet ready to reveal yet, but something something to do with, with presently, you know, from Manipur all, all the time <laughs> in my own proximity. So, yeah, that is going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any advice if somebody wants to become a filmmaker? What advice would you give? Um, there's nothing like you just begin. You just start. You know, in the sense, <clears throat> you don't keep waiting. <clears throat> All I would say is, yeah. Uh, if you have, you feel like you know you have to shoot something, and you keep planning. You keep planning all the time, thinking a lot on the paper everywhere you keep thinking about it you keep thinking about a budget you keep thinking about how do i hire a camera how do i do this that i think that's just gonna kill your time but as you just start doing it and you learn you progress as you move on with the story you know the story sometimes take care of you know what like actually you wanted to do so it happens most of the time there's sometimes the story just keep carrying you even if you are dull one day but you know that you know you have to do it you just get up and you go you start shooting so that, that is what i feel that just just be a go-getter get up you know do it don't keep uh procrastinating i have to do it tomorrow this that don't don't do that if you ha- want to do it just do it now and uh and you have uh, the whole you know, I mean, thousands and thousands of resources are available 
online as well so something to refer to so it's it's just the tacky is just you know you have to uh, just step in you know you have to just do your you know begin your baby step just just barge in just do it don't keep waiting for anything and even for funding or anything everything will eventually happens once you have something then your idea and everything it will keep shaping you know whether to cut for a trader whether you know you have to put that in a pitching platform so everything will follow once you start and once you connect with people you know in the same kind of a field yeah thank you so much ma'am for joining the podcast it's, yeah, thank you so much, Akash. It was lovely talking to you. It's and, my pleasure man, to be able to talk to you yeah, because I've and, seen Android games and I really, really loved it. Because I also used to play football and I was also oh. a national player in school. Oh, wonderful. So that's why I really, really, really loved your film. Oh, thank you so much. And you see, like, you're, I'm, I'm following your trying to know cinema because... I'm also still struggling trying to know cinema, actually. It is not over for me. There's so much to learn, you know, in this world. So we have to be just, you know, as passionate as possible and keep following what our hearts want, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful, Akash. Yeah. Thank you.